Oh no, Papa has to do mental arithmetic. That's the point where I didn't proceed because it looked okay. <laughs> Now we are going to go for square root of 5. My boys and girls out there and my engineering friends. This is home to you guys. This is just um, first class engineering. Engineering 101. <laughs> Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. It's your boy Papa Flemmy. I'm fresh back from Paris, but this video is going to come out in like, I don't know, three or four weeks. So it's really going to take a while up until this is out probably, but never mind. This right here is kind of a new series you could say. I'm going to call it Papa Flemmy's Mathematical Snacks or for short Math Snacks. And here we are going to talk about math stuff, stuff I'm thinking about while being in the bus. And this thing right here has been recommended a bit. And today we are going to go full engineer. That's not even meant to be a joke or anything. The solution to this thing can only be approximated numerically. So it really doesn't have any closed form. And that's why we are going to go engineer today. And you can laugh at me all you want. I really don't care. You can't break my little engineer in my heart right here, it's going to turn out pretty good. So um, I'm pretty certain that it's going to turn out pretty good. I don't know the real solution out of my head right now. It's something in the negatives. That's the only thing that I know. But we are going to take a look at what I'm going to approximate it to. And yeah, then the real solution, I'm going to put it in here somewhere. And then we are going to compare between those two how great the accuracy is. So yeah. Let's go ahead and get started. So it's not like in my Papa Flemish improvised sessions. Here I know a bit about what I'm going to do. So I have a little plan what I'm going to do. And here, yeah, now we're going to talk about it a bit. So like I said, this thing right here doesn't really have a nice solution, not a closed form. That's why we have to approximate it. And for this, I would like to take a look at a certain function. We are going to take this stuff to the other side. So subtracting the right hand side and we are going to call this thing f of x. So f of x, no, that's an implication, is nothing but, well, e to the x minus x squared plus 1. And well, finding the zeros of this function is equivalent to saying, uh, well, we want to find the x value for which this right here is true. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. At first, I would like to take a look at the graph of this thing. Let's see how it looks like here. Yeah. And for this, we have to do our first approximation. We know by the fundamental theorem of engineering that E is nothing but pi, but we all know that pi is nothing but four. It's just going to make calculations easier. Don't laugh at me, it's going to work out wonders. So we're going to take a look at, well, roughly f of x being kind of four to the x power minus x squared plus one, okay? And four is good because it's a perfect square. Now we, we can plug some stuff in. For example, at which point does our graph cut through the y-axis, okay? That's the same as saying, well, what happens if x is equal to zero? So f of zero is nothing but, okay, this is one minus zero plus one is nothing but two, okay? That, that worked out quite well. So it's something here, okay? We're going to go through here. Then, for example, why not take a look at f of one half? That's why I've chosen four right here. So f of one half is nothing but, well, four to the one half power, that's square root of four, minus one half squared plus one. Okay, this right here is nothing but two. Okay, that's two squared to the one half power, that's two. This is nothing but one quarter. Negative one quarter plus one is 3 over 4. Okay, so this makes 3 over 4. And this is between, well, it's a bit less than 3, okay? It's somewhere here, probably. Okay, we've got this. Why not take a look at negative 1 half? So f of negative 1 half being equal to, okay, this is nothing but 4 to the negative 1 half power, and then we just have negative negative 1 half squared plus 1. This right here is the same as this one. 3 over 4. And we also have, well, uh, this is one half then, okay? I hope you can see where this came from. This is one quarter square root of this thing. 
is one half. Okay, so we are going to get, um, this is nothing but two over four. Okay, and yeah, right, this is um, five over four. So that's a bit more than one. So it's somewhere here. Let, let's say it's here, okay? It's somewhere there, it's a bit more than one. Now I would like to take a look what's under our y-axis right here. For example, why not plug in, I don't know, um, negative one for example. I really don't know. Yeah, y being, no, um, x being equal to, I don't know. Um, negative one wouldn't be good. That would be somewhere here. Okay, we found this out. So why not take a look at negative two for example. Okay, f of negative two is nothing but, okay, this is, um, 4 to the negative 2 power, this is 1 16th. Then we are going to have negative. Okay, this is going to give us 4. And then we are going to have plus 1. So this thing right here is negative 3. That's a bit more than negative 2, but a bit less than negative 3, so it's somewhere here, okay? So our graph roughly looks like this one right here, okay? It really doesn't quite matter. All I want to show you is that our zero is going to be somewhere in the negatives right here. Also, if you let the limit go to positive in infinity, e to the x is going to grow way harder than x squared. So in the limit, it's going to go to positive infinity. So it's strictly increasing all the time. And also, if you let it go to negative infinity, this goes to zero, this goes to negative infinity. Okay, so it's going to go to negative infinity. So this whole graph is strictly increasing all the time. So we have taken a look at that. Like I said, it's more of a little math talk right here. And that's nice. So we know where our zero is. That's what we want to take a look at. Now, here comes the next approximation. My boys and girls out there. e to the x. We can put it in a different way. We know that this is nothing but the sum from k equals to zero to infinity of, well, x to the k power over k factorial minus x squared plus one. This is the Taylor series expansion. And here's a little matter of fact. If you take a look at the graph of a Taylor series, you might notice. So if we take a look at here, it's always going to have the same spot up here where it cuts the y-axis, okay? Every approximation of those terms, so the zero of term is going to go through here, the first term is going to go through here, not the first term, the first order terms going to go through here and so on. And also our Taylor series parts, our approximated parts, so if we don't let it go to infinity, we let it go to n for example, are always going to oscillate around our real zero that we have right here. So for example, our first approximation looks something like this one right here. Then we have the next approximation. It looks something like this. Okay, so first on the left and the right and then well, here comes the next approximation through here and then comes the next approximation, something like this. And you see it's going to oscillate around this real zero all the time. So what I thought about is we are going to approximate our f of x. So we are going to put a little index right here, a little sequence index. fn of x is nothing but an approximated exponential function from k equals to zero to n of x to the k power over k factorial minus x squared plus one. What I would like to do is I would like to go for the first three iterations right here. So f0, f1, f2, okay, those are the first three. They are going to oscillate around our real zero. For example, this one, this one, and this one, okay? Those three right here. Then we are going to take those three, add them together, and take the arithmetic mean of those. So dividing those by three. We are just going to take the mean of those three, and we are going to be approximately at the zero right here, okay? This is the plan. And it does work out pretty good, I guess. So let's take a look at F0. I hope you can follow where I'm going, okay? So we are going to take a few values and then we are going to take the mean of those and they are going to be approximately at our real zero that we want to go for. F0 of x. Okay, the, the zero of term is nothing but 
Well, x to the zero of power over zero factorial, this is one plus one max two minus x squared. And we want to go for the zeros of this thing. So we want f naught to be equal to zero. This is easy to solve. That means x one and two, just adding this on both sides, take the square root. It's nothing but positive or negative square root of two. But that's why I did this little um, graphing at the beginning. We roughly know that our zero is going to be in the negative somewhere. So we have to take a look at the negative branch of this thing. So this is our first zero that we have. Now for the second one. F1 of x is nothing but. Okay, the zero of term is one. And then the first term is x to the first power over x factorial, uh, one factorial, this is nothing but x. So one plus one makes two plus x minus x squared. And we want this to be equal to zero once again. We want to find all the zeros of this thing. Meaning we can multiply both sides by negative one. Okay, leaving us with positive x squared and here negative signs. And then we can use the quadratic formula whatsoever. Meaning we're going to end up with two values, x one and two being equal to, okay, this is nothing but one half plus minus square root of one quarter. I hope you know where this comes from. I derived this actually before using completing the square and shit. One quarter and then we are going to have positive two. Two is nothing but if we expand this fraction, eight over four, leaving us with nine quarters. If we take the square root of this, it's going to give us three over two. Meaning we have two possible roots, namely one plus minus three over two. But we want it to be in the negatives, just like before. Okay, we don't want to take a look at the positive branch, branch whatsoever, meaning we're going to take the negative part right here. It's going to give us negative two over two, which is nothing but negative one. Okay, this sounds like a rough approximation, a really rough one, but it's going to make sense in the end. Okay, so we have our first two zeros and now we are going to go for the next one. I don't have any place left, so yeah. Let's erase everything. It's a math talk right here. You can take a look at my other channel and you can find a completely uncut version there probably. Now for the next one. So now we are going to take a look at f2. Okay, so f2 of x is nothing but. Okay, we know the first two, this is going to be two plus x. And the next one is x squared over two factorial is x squared over two positive x squared over two minus x squared. You can expand this fraction by two over two, leaving us with negative x squared over two. Okay, this is child's play. I'm not going to go into further detail about expanding fractions. Once again, we want this to be equal to zero. Okay, as always, multiply both sides by negative two to get rid of the first coefficient right here. Okay, this is going to leave us um, with positive x squared negative 2x and here negative 4. Okay, and now we can find the zeros of the thing. x1 and 2 are nothing but. Okay, this is going to give us positive 1 plus minus square root of. Okay, this is going to give us 1 squared, which is nothing but 1, positive 4. Meaning, this is nothing but square root of 5. And once again, taking a look at the negative branch. Getting rid of this. This is our last zero that we have. Okay, like I said, we are going to take a look at the arithmetic mean of this thing right here. Meaning, our zero is approximately, well, those values, one minus square root of five, plus, um, okay, negative square root of two, negative one, over three. So we uh, took a look at the first three of those. And in the limit, if you take more and more iterations, you should exactly be at our real zero. But for approximation purposes, this is all right. You see positive one, negative one is going to cancel out. You can bring the negative sign completely to the front, leaving us with negative square root of five plus square root of two over three. <laughs> Dead. Daddy, Baba, Papa Flammy. What the fuck? Now you are giving us square roots. That's not good. Square root ain't good. 
That's why we are going to do our next approximations. And for this I would like to look at something that we have derived before. The Taylor series expansion for our square root of x plus 1 or 1 plus x. Since I don't have this thing in my head because it consists of basically double factorials and stuff like this, we are going to derive the first three terms, I guess, of the Taylor series expansion. And it's going to be once again a pretty rough approximation for our square roots. Also our Taylor series is only going to converge for the absolute value of x being strictly less than 1. So 1 plus 4 giving us square root of 5 isn't going to work this easily. We have to do more work on this one. But at first let's approximate this one right here. Square root of 1 plus x is nothing but 1 plus x to the 1 half power. Okay, so f is nothing but 1 plus x to the 1 half power. Let's approximate this, uh, let's differentiate this once. Okay, so f prime is nothing but 1 half to the front, 1 plus x to the negative 1 half power. Okay, coolio. Then differentiating this once more, f double prime is nothing but negative 1 quarter, 1 plus x to the um, negative 3 over 2. Differentiating this once more, let's do one more iteration. It's going to give us um, positive 3 over 8, 1 plus x to the negative 5 over 2. Okay, I hope you can see where this came from. We derived this before, take a look in the description. There's probably a link to the video regarding this Taylor series expansion. Now, it's the McLaurin series or Taylor series. Let's evaluate all those derivatives at zero. Meaning, at x being equal to zero, we are going to get one at first. This is square root of one. Always some square root of one, so those terms are always are going to obey to one. So leaving us with the coefficients, giving us one half and then giving us um, negative one over four and giving us three over eight. I'm not certain if I'm going to put this into here because you see sometimes you are going to get more accurate results on Taylor series approximations if you leave some terms out. So maybe if we add something to it it's going to give us a more rough approximation. So maybe I'm going to leave this out. Give me a second to think. So our Taylor series is approximately 1 plus this is going to give us x over 2. The next one is negative x squared over 2 factorial, so it's the same thing like with this Taylor series right here. You're going to get over k factorial. So negative, okay, 2 factorial is nothing but 2, so negative x squared over 8. Also it's going to go really really messy, so working with the 3 right here is not good. Um, yeah, just because, okay, 3 isn't divisible by 2 or 2 doesn't divide 3, so that's not good. Also this weird Marquise is going down once again, that's why the light is going to go a little bit darker right here. Never mind. We are going to go just for this right here. This is approximately our Taylor series and also this is just going to work for absolute value of x being strictly less than 1. Let's approximate square root of 2 a little bit. Okay, this once again was easy to calculate. Square root of 2. It's nothing but square root of 1 plus 1. This is our x, this one, meaning that's roughly 1 plus 1 half, negative 1 eighth. Okay? We can expand all those fractions, so this is nothing but 8 over 8. This is nothing but 4 over 8, giving us um, 11 over 8. Okay? Oh no, Papa has to do mental arithmetic. That's the point where I didn't proceed because it looked okay. <laughs> so let me do some mental arithmetic. So this makes one, okay? This is one dot, okay. We have a remainder of three, meaning we can advance this so we get one dot three. Then we have a remainder of six, giving us seven because we have um, 56, okay, leaving us with four. This is nice, okay. One dot three, seven, five. I hope you can see where this came from. That was actually quite easy. Now we are going to go for square root of five. My boys and girls out there and my engineering friends, this is home to you guys. This is just 
um, first class engineering, engineering 101. <laughs> okay, square root of five. Like I said, the problem is, our absolute value of x has to be strictly less than one. Four is definitely not strictly less than one, so we have to play around a bit. Can we decompose this into something nice, this five? Yeah, we can get a perfect square out of this because five is nothing but four times one dot two five. Okay, we, uh, both of those are positive, so we can factor both parts out, break the square root up into square root of four, which is nothing but two. This is really nice. Two is a really nice number. We can work with this times the square root of one dot two five. Cool thing is one dot two five is nothing but one plus one quarter. Okay, this, this works out quite nicely. So this is giving us two times square root one plus one quarter. Yeah, coolio, um, this works out better than expected. So one quarter is definitely strictly less than one. So we can work with this. Let's plug this in. So we are going to get one plus one eighth in this case. And then negative one quarter squared is one sixteenth. So negative 16 times 8 is nothing but 80 plus, okay, this is 128. So 2 to the 7th power, that's what I was thinking, because we have 2 to the 3rd power times 2 to the 4th power is 2 to the 7th power, and we know that this is 128. That's how I'm calculating stuff most of the time. We can expand those fractions, so that's 128 over 128. Now we have to expand this by, well, exactly 16. Okay, this is 16 over 128. We can put this together. Okay, this is um, 133. Okay, this is 133 over 128. <sighs> this looks like a bit more fun. Okay, um, then we are going to get, obviously, we are going to get a one. <sighs> then we have a remainder of 15, right? Yeah, that's the remainder of 15. We are going to get 150, meaning we can put another one into here with a remainder of 22. That's 220, meaning we can put <laughs> one thing into here once again. But this is going to leave us with 90. 92, right? 92, okay, we have to... 92. We can put this seven times into there. So uh, 143, we can put it seven times into here. Okay, I hope this is correct. We are going to get 1.117. Okay, let us move on with this right here. Yeah, we can... Seven times, this is 700, 700 plus... Um, 280 is going to give us 980. Yeah, this should do trick. Okay, now we have to take this two times actually. Okay, this is the thing two times. I'm terribly sorry. Just multiply this by two. I forgot to track this down. I'm terribly sorry. There are probably already comments down there um, telling me that I shouldn't forget the 2, giving us um, 2.234, okay? I hope you agree with me. Then we are going to take the arithmetic mean of those, okay? We are going to add 1.375 to our approximate 2.234 and then over 3. All the good things are free today. Free consecutive terms of Taylor series and three uh, digits. Yeah, coolio. Um, okay, what is this going to vary to? So obviously we have a three right here. Then we are going to get uh, six, three dot six. This is going to give us a zero. Yeah, it's going to give us a zero and a nine of a three. Oh goodness, um, this turns out actually pretty good because all those digits are divisible by 3, giving us a nice answer of 1.203. And this is my approximate answer to this very problem that's not on this chalkboard right here anymore. Like I said, somewhere the real solution and the percentage of accuracy is going to pop up somewhere at the screen right here and this has been the first episode of 
meth snacks. I hope you did enjoy. It's like a little meth talks with my boy right here. With my boys, um, I'm being English retarded at the moment. I'm terribly sorry. I'm being mentally disabled ever since I've been born. Ooh, I'm autistic as fuck. Yeah, um, I hope you did like this. So if you want to calculate something like this in your exams, for example, take your time, try it out. You don't need a calculator. All you need is your little header and your engineer, your inner engineer boy. <laughs> If you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe and recommend this channel if you like, if you want to support the channel a bit more. Click at my Quora links. It's helping the channel out big time and you don't have to do anything but clicking on those questions that I post in the comments out there or sometimes in my community. Buy those t-shirts I created, support the channel on Patreon. Whatever you do, I thank you guys for watching. Up until the next video, have a flamble day. See ya, my engineering boys.